So it is seven o'clock and we have um, a group that is uh, starting to join us. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our Spanish interpreter, uh, Ms. Maria Lopez, uh, so that she can uh, share with folks um, how they can access interpretation services. Um, or Derek, um, I don't know if you need to do any description on, on how to access those services. Buenas noches a todos. Soy María López. Voy a ser la traductora de español para esta noche. Cualquier cosa, este, van a abrir un grupo donde van a poder escuchar la traducción al español. Debajo en la pantalla pueden hacer clic y elegir interpretación en español. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. So my name is Philip Lynch. I'm the director of special education services for Montgomery County Estamos Public hablando. Schools. If you uh, need interpretation services, you can access the globe at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to review the uh, agenda, but uh, first I'd like to do some introductions. Uh, we have a, 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 a well-known visitor here that um, I'm going to introduce first because um, she is uh, back with us, and that's Jennifer Strobel, and I just want to point that out because I know that uh, she's been missed in the last few meetings and Jen is going to be here this evening with us in our new capacity um, so I wanted to share that first but um, before we get into the agenda I'd like to introduce um, our my parent co-chairs uh, I'll start with Connie Connie you want to introduce yourself first Buddy, I'm Connie Nepomuceno I'm a co-chair I've been um, attended this meeting since my son was three years old. If you're new to this meeting, welcome. We hope to see you every month. And with that said, I'll just pass the mic to Amy. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see you again and uh, welcome to our new families. I'm Amy Bloom. I have um, two boys, one at Bethesda Elementary and um, another in sixth grade at Westland, and he receives special ed services. So um, we're navigating that. Um, and uh, Jen, it's nice to see you and we wish you luck. And I just wanna thank you for somehow managing to be both so efficient and kind all the time. And it's that's not easy to do and you really do it so gracefully. So we're really gonna miss you. And that's after taking a lot of abuse from me. So that's some, saying something. So uh, we also have a third parent co-chair that, co that is uh, Victoria Aiello and uh, she um, may be joining us later, although I'm not sure co-chairs have you heard uh, if she will, she won't, she will not be here this evening um, or you have not heard. So we, so we will introduce her if, um, if, she, if or when she jumps in. <clears throat> and uh, that said, uh, co-chairs, uh, uh, do you have any public comment that you've received? No, we haven't. Okay. And so for those of you who may be new to our meeting, that if you ever would like to do a public testimony, you could either reach out to one of the co-chairs, you could reach out to Phil and just let them know that you have one and we will make sure that you have an opportunity to um, say what you want to say. There are a few, you know, um, sort of ground rules that we ask with the public testimony. And that's just that, you know, you don't give away too much confidential information to respect to all of the people at the school. Um, but um, Amy and Connie, if I forgot any of those rules that we have, please jump in. Okay, so um, we already have been welcomed and there are no public testimonies. So this brings us to the rest of the agenda. Next, we're gonna hear from Mary Beth Mansaranis um, about all of the amazing family support services that has been going on. Um, I had the opportunity to pop in and see her work at a family workshop that was at the central office uh, just two days ago. And I was very impressed with the organization. We're gonna hear from Sharon, who has the luxury to partner with me in my new position about everything that's going on with recreation. We'll hear from Justine Pfeiffer, the coordinator who is running for the entire district. It's a huge lift, what you probably know as CARES tutoring. And then I'm going to talk to you about out of school time, and I'm going to be seeking community feedback from special ed parents about out of school time. So I'm not sure if Phil made it back on, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Mary Beth. Hi everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, as Jen mentioned, we um, did just complete our three part series on the IEP and um, our final session, we had 189 people registered. Unfortunately it was in person and we only had two people show up. So, 
We did receive some feedback that people really wanted to attend, but thought that it was online. So we are looking to um, try to work with Parent Academy and do it online in the next two weeks. So I will send that information out to you. Um, and we will put all of the slideshows and the question and answer document that was started from the first um, parent workshop. We'll have all of those questions and all of those answers available in one Q&A format for you. Um, we understand that the whole IEP process for people, even those of you who have been in it forever, there's still so many questions that come up. So um, we are looking to try to do this multiple times throughout the year and to have opportunities for specialists to be there to answer um, some questions. But really just my, my nudge to all of you will be to please share your experiences because it really does help us, particularly in this role that I have, it helps to figure out where the discrepancies are and where the parent needs are. Um, because although I've talked to many families, I'm clearly not talking to everybody. So um, finding out about your experiences helps us to plan appropriately to, um, you know, to give you the services that you need. Um, so I will jump off at this point and let Derek take over. That's a great intro. Thank you. Um, so I believe that packets went out to the schools that went out to families that received information just recently about the MSDE Parent Involvement Survey. This is a survey that really only takes about two to three minutes to fill out. And this provides information to share experiences and ideas that, um, like Mary Beth mentioned, help, help us and help the school system uh, highlight any areas of need and strengths and, um, and, and that kind of thing. So the deadline is May 19th. So um, if you don't want to fill it out by paper, uh, you can fill it out online. The link is here above. It's uh, mdparentsurvey.com. And um, additionally, if uh, you happen to go to our special education fair this spring uh, at Gaithersburg High School, uh, we'll also have uh, parent surveys there available to fill out um, if you forget uh, last minute. Okay. And uh, once you go to the link online, uh, all you have to do is just, um, we'll put the link in the chat as well if you want to go ahead and get started tonight. And if you do have um, multiple siblings, you do want to fill out a, a survey for each. I want to mention also uh, with the Family Support Center that on our MCPS Special Education Facebook page, there's constantly events and resources that are, um, that are always posted. Uh, so for example, this week, uh, there's a, um, an event coming up on the 27th. And then also we have a Twitter page that also um, announces events and any resources as well. Hi, everybody. I'm Justine, and I'm really excited to share information about tutoring with you tonight. The, um, you know, when, when you have a district this large, getting accurate information out to a lot of people can be tricky. So I always look forward to times where I can explain what's happening in the world of tutoring. So we right now have several different opportunities for how tutoring can happen. Some are um, more easily accessible than others. I'll start by talking about the MCPS staffed tutoring. As much as we would all love to have our own child's teacher uh, be their own personal tutor after school, we are reliant on um, staffing. This is an extra opportunity. So staffing does get a little bit tricky here and we're doing lots of things to get as many tutors involved as possible and trained so that we get a really high level experience for students. All of the, every single thing I talk about tonight is free for families. Um, and like I said, we're, we're constantly looking for different ways to access more students. And so um, we've also added on two additional companies that are tutoring companies uh, supporting virtual tutoring. Um, and I'll go into more detail about those two companies and the difference between the two and why you would choose one over the other. So I'm really proud of these stats. Um, and then I also want to say that we really want to serve more students. Um, and so, like I said, we're, we're always looking for ways to, to add more depth to the program to access more students. So right now we're serving over 11,000 students um, just with MCPS staff and then an additional 5,000 and growing um, with our two companies supporting this effort. So one of the ways that we have MCPS tutoring, and this was actually in conjunction with 
um, partnership with the team that is coordinating the compensatory recovery services um, hours and making sure that the students are connected with service providers. They had already done a really great job at setting up four sites. And a lot of our work is actually very similar. So I work with that team quite a bit um, as, our, as our work overlaps. And so um, we partnered so that tutoring could also be added on to add additional in-person opportunities at these four sites. They're listed here on this slide. This again is um, MCPS staffed. So it is referred by schools who, um, this could be a situation where um, the school ran out of tutoring staff, but really wanted to have um, students tutored. It could be that the, the schedule that the school was offering wasn't conducive to the family or the style wasn't um, the right match. So we do have these weekend tutoring spots. Again, this is reliant on uh, staffing. It's the, I think the, um, the problem of the nation right now, finding enough people to do the work. Uh, we are constantly hiring. I do interviews every single week to add on more staff. So this is growing. They are Saturdays and Sundays um, and sessions are offered between eight and four. Um, not from eight to four, but a session within that block. So I'm, I'd like to go into um, the specifics for each of the two companies that we partner with. Um, they are free to any student in two forms. If you are sitting at home and you're working on your homework and maybe writing an essay, uh, something was just presented in class and the, and the students are feeling confused, both companies offer on-demand support. So students go through MCPS Clever and they go in and they request a tutor. And this is just for this acute short-term issue. I don't know how to do this math problem and I need some help. I need this essay proofread before I turn it in. Um, the main difference between the two companies is the um, experience for the student. FEV offers no camera. So some people think that there's a robot on the other side. There's an actual live person. Um, it is not artificial intelligence. It is a real person, but they use uh, a chat-based process to communicate. The reason that FEV chose this model was they were um, really watching what was happening during virtual learning and saw a lot of cameras off. And so they recognized that there is a portion of our students who learn virtually pretty well and they don't particularly like somebody staring at them. Some families really uh, liked the, the privacy of not having somebody, a stranger from on the other side of the internet looking into their home. So they chose to go with no camera. This has worked really well for some students and obviously it does not work well for every student. So we do have um, a second company. Before we go to the next slide, I want to share that um, I jumped ahead of my own self. There's two ways that we can use these companies. One, like I said, is that on-demand support for maybe a homework assignment, but then all MCPS families are able to request that ongoing high dosage of tutoring for something that's not just a quick fix, but something that the child needs more support um, at that higher dosage. So FEV Tutor is also right now offering free SAT, SAT prep courses. Um, this is through their platform. Um, this is for students that are thinking of taking that um, upcoming May SAT. The students can sign up. It can be a six to eight week long course, depending on the student's schedule and how many sessions they do per week. Um, I did include the link to their form um, within embedded in this slide. And then just some, I, I just took a, a little bit of their, their flyer to, to show some of the things that they're offering. Um, we can go to the next slide and I'll talk about Tutor Me Education. This is our second company that we're partnering with. Again, this is virtual. This is more appropriate for grades K to 12. FEV, you need to have a command of, of that messaging piece. Um, and so this is appropriate for students who um, either they need to have the ability to really just talk through um, their thinking with a person on, with their camera on and um, or students who are a little bit older and have a better command of typing. The same uh, two services are provided. You can do scheduled, that high dosage or on demand. And again, 
we have created a what's called a single sign on system where students once they sign into MCPS they're able to get into the platform for tutor me education. So some, the similarities, um, they both have their own platform, their own website that they use for their sessions. They both record the sessions, they take and then send session notes out to the families following the session. Um, and they track that progress so that uh, you have some idea of what's going on with uh, the sessions and how the, well the students are doing. Um, we've partnered the content supervisors for math and ELA have um, worked with the companies to make sure that they have the same grade level content standards that we use in MCPS. They have access to our pacing guide, so they're able to see what we're working on currently with students. And then they can also go back um, to do more remedial work if needed, um, if that would be a more appropriate place to support students. I've put the contact information for both companies. So for Tutor Me Education, the best way to start, you can use any of them, but the best way to start is that request form. That sends you to directly to the information that they're gonna need to get started. Um, if you have any issues with um, either one of them, you can use their website, or I'm sorry, their email address or their phone number as well. Um, and this contact information would be for situations where you would want to schedule that higher dosage, more frequent, more ongoing um, tutoring. And like I said earlier, if you wanted that on-demand session, you can go straight through Clever. Um, the way students access Clever, if a student signs into a device using their MCPS uh, login information, at the top left corner, there's a folder built into the screen that says MCPS resources, and in there is Clever. If you click on Clever, um, you're already signed in, and then you can um, go, there's a tile for FEV and a tile for TutorMe, and you can go in and request um, those tutors. We can go to the next slide. I do see some questions popping up. I'll get to those when I finish. I think that would be a better time. Justine, this is Phil. I apologize, everybody, for getting kicked off. Hopefully, I wasn't frozen in a really embarrassing position, but I'm going to have Laura Johnson, who's one of our supervisors. She's agreed to um, answer or ask you the questions that she's seeing pop up in the chat. So you go ahead. Okay. And then you're done. Um, and just so folks know, because I want to say this in advance, typically, Justine, we have the presenters at the end in a breakout, but because there's a whole nother presentation. I'm gonna let you go. Um, so you don't need to stay for the breakout, but parents, if you have questions, I wanna make sure that we ask them of Justine while she's here. Um, and so we will have her for a few minutes. You don't, if you don't wanna put something in the chat then you're welcome to come off the mic later on. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure we get your questions before she goes. That sounds great, thanks. A couple of people were asking questions about, will this program continue through the summer and or next school year? That's a great question. And the answer is yes. Um, we do plan to continue tutoring through the summer and then next school year. I, I will say it does shift a little bit in the summer because everything shifts in the summer um, and we need to work around uh, the school sites. There's a lot of um, facilities projects that happen over the summer. Um, and so uh, information will be sent out through schools in terms of what it looks like for students that have been selected for um, MCPS tutoring, and then the um, both of the companies are available all through the summer. Um, next year, we will continue very much at the same uh, pace that we are currently working. Um, and after that, I had cannot answer the questions because we get into different funding sources at that point. Wonderful. Thank you. And what is the level of experience the tutors have in these two uh, private organizations with special education students? Sure. Um, both companies have tutors with special ed experience and just gen ed experience. And so um, if a need arises with um, a particular um, focus within within the realm of special education, um, there's an opportunity to share that with the tutors uh, or with the company so that you can specifically um, see um, if they have somebody to meet the needs of your students um, with with everything in tutoring, it's one of those things where um, it's it's staffing based. And so there's are times where there's a longer wait um, for a more specific need. Um, and then we can, um, you know, 
they, they've done a really amazing job at, at working really hard to find people. They, just like we are, are in um, a constant hiring situation where they're they haven't stopped opening the gates and and sending out the uh, alarms for for more support. So they are doing an amazing job adding on staffing as our interest has grown pretty tremendously. Wonderful, thank you. You spoke a little bit about how the tutors had access to our standards and our pacing guides, but do the tutors have access to the actual curriculum resources? Um, that's an excellent question. They don't have full access to our curriculum. There are um, guidelines from the curriculum vendor side um, that restrict access. Um, it's uh, So they have as much access as what they are allowed to have. Um, and students can always share materials that they have. A, a lot of our curriculum resources are online and, the, and that the students have access to a lot of those and those can be shared um, from the student side. Wonderful. Just I think two more. Um, someone was asking about if they could keep their same tutor, but I think you kind of touched on that. We don't know from from day to day, from year to year, if the same person will be available. Right. Um, as much as possible, we try to keep everybody together. One of the wonderful things when I was talking earlier about the weekend tutoring, one of the main reasons that that started was because students were finishing up their CRS hours and the tutor or the provider um, and the family really wanted that connection to maintain um, and keep going after the hours were met for the IEP. So we wanted to build this bridge and this opportunity and really it's the same service that the CRS provider jumps over to the, the tutoring side um, and basically just fills out a different timesheet, but the services remain. So we really have tried hard to um, maintain that connection wherever possible. I think there might still be a little bit of confusion about the in-person tutoring in, in the centers and then what MCPS staff are doing and then what these outside vendors are doing. Sure, I'll try to clarify. Um, and if I don't do a good enough job, let me know and I'll try again. So um, the MCPS tutoring is MCPS staff uh, and they in all of the mcps staffed tutoring the school is reaching out and trying to make those connections this is not by request from families unfortunately we just don't have the staffing to say that it's available to all 160,000 students and like i said we're in a constant attempt to add more more tutors to the staff and so that is by referral from the school both for that weekend tutoring central sites and also any school-based tutoring that's happening within uh, that school for that school building. The tutoring companies, FEV and TutorMe, they are available to any MCPS student for both on-demand support and scheduled ongoing higher dosage, longer term support with tutoring. Okay, thank you. I think that about does it unless someone has another question. So because we're going to let Justine go and not um, not not have her wait until the other presentation uh, for the breakout, uh, are there any, is there anybody who would like to come off uh, mute and, and ask Justine a follow up? I see I see a question that popped up here um, and, and like how the the order of um, referrals is is handled. Uh, and it's twofold. One, um, we try to go in order, but then we also have to make sure that we've got a tutor with those that has the skill set that is needed by the students. So, for example, if uh, a 10th grader needs help with geometry, um, is the first to request tutoring, um, but we don't have a tutor who is able to tutor in geometry, but is able to tutor second grade reading then we'll go to second grade reading. Um, and so it's kind of this delicate balance of, of trying to find people in the order in which referrals are, are received. Um, and we do, uh, there's a constant reach for support. And so I coordinate all of the lead tutors at the school sites and very often they will say, well, actually it's not as often as what, it's a pretty nice situation. We have um, occasionally the, lead tutor will reach out to me and say, do you know anybody who can take on another student in, you know, whatever content area? And 
and I go searching and digging and uh, we're pretty good at matching. So we're getting there um, as, as fast as we can. Um, Ms. Mustafa has her hand up. Um, uh, Ms. Mustafa, yeah. would you like to ask your question? Yes, my question is uh, for you, Justine. I just, the four sites that you were mentioning, Little Bennett and uh, and, two, and two or three other sites, you said, it, so it can't be a walk-in. So I would need to have my child be referred by the school staff. Yeah, so what you can do is you can reach out to the school um, and the the lead tutor, I would call the school and ask who the lead tutor is and they'll have access to that form. Um, the way the way I've built the form is that the there needs to be a staff referral. So somebody on staff needs to say, yes, this child needs tutoring. And and that's built okay. in to really protect the students who need tutoring the most so that they're they're made available first. And so we don't have students who are, um, you know, four grade levels ahead and and uh, ready to start college at 13, getting extra tutoring prior to somebody who really does need it. So um, in the state, in the case where you'd really hope to get your child referred to one of the sites, my recommendation is is kind of hit a couple people. Um, maybe the special ed um, education case manager um, could you could say, hey, I would love to have this opportunity. They might not know about it. Like I said, spreading the word is the biggest um, thing I try to try to do and make sure everybody knows all the information that um, of tutoring that we have available. And then once you speak to the case manager and ask them to speak to the lead tutor to, to get that referral form, families can fill it out themselves. You just need to know that there is a referring staff member spot on that form and you need to have the name of that uh, staff member. So in this case, it could be your special education case manager or the classroom teacher. Um, we do follow up with that person to get any additional information on learning strategies that they've had that were successful or things to avoid that you know have, they've tried and haven't worked. Are there any other questions um, that I that may, and did I miss anybody with their hand up? I can't see everybody, but I'm trying to stay alert. Uh, anybody else? Uh, last questions for for Justine. I saw one come in just now for bilingual tutors. Um, on there are bilingual tutors both Hello? on the MCPS side and on the tutoring company side. And again, it just it matter. It's all down to availability. Somebody was unmuted and and trying to ask a question. Uh, yes, um, my daughters have been uh, with tutoring me, I believe, since October, and I believe I put a, in a text message stating that I wanted, uh, is it possible for them to keep the, um, the tutor that they have throughout the summer and throughout the next school term? The reason why I asked because I feel that they are comfortable and um, he really does support them and make sure that they understand the material that they are being taught. So is it any way that I can contact school to me education and have put in a request to keep that same tutor? I love that positive feedback. I'm so happy it's been a good experience. Um, we've had so much good feedback um, about tutor me education. So that's great to hear another one. Um, yes, I think that um, just like we do with MCPS, TutorMe really tries hard to keep connections going. And as long as the schedules align and things are moving forward, then they should keep them. And I think it's completely appropriate to use that information, the contact information, just send a quick email or make a phone call and say, this is going well, we'd love to keep this going. Um, and I think that I don't see any reason why they wouldn't want to either. It's it's more work for them to find uh you know do the matching process so they they'll want to keep you guys together just as much as we do with MCPS tutoring. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to hear that positive story. And uh, Justine, you know you have been so wonderful. You got a nice um you got a couple of nice comments there in the chat. But I also want to add that you know we we were I added Justine late because uh, we had some questions at our last meeting. So I didn't give her a lot of notice, and uh, she was more than uh, willing to jump on. Um, she has done an amazing job with uh, coordinating this effort for MCPS, and also you know, coordinating other efforts around trying to help uh, mitigate the learning loss. You know that was um, due to the to the pandemic. So I just can't thank you enough, Justine. And it sounds like you um, answered a lot of questions for folks. Uh, so we really appreciate that. And 
I think you've got some willing soldiers now who are um, going to help you to um, spread the word. I appreciate it. Um, and I, I just, I hope that we can uh, serve as many students as we can. And I appreciate the patience when, when you're waiting for that tutor to match and um, we're working hard to make sure it happens. Well, thank you again. And um, we, you, we are not going to hold you, Justine. So okay. um, you're welcome to jump off. I think you've done your due diligence and, uh, and we will, we will um, uh, tap back into your services if, uh, if we have any future need, but thank you so much. Thank you. I'll have a great evening. So again, I apologize for, uh, for uh, freezing. I more than froze my, my entire computer um, locked up on me and I had to, had to start restart everything. Um, so, so thank you for, for, um, for covering for me, Jen, and for others. But I do want to um, backtrack a little bit before we jump into our next presentation. I did see a message as I was logging back on from um, Vittoria Aiello, our other co-chair. So she apologizes, but is not able to join us um, this evening. Um, but she, um, she uh, says hello to everybody and, and gives her best regards. Um, I also meant to mention um, on behalf of Ms. Lopez, who is our Spanish interpreter, that the presenters need to be presenting at a pace uh, that she can help keep up with. So I didn't get a chance to say that at the beginning, <laughs> but if everybody could maybe slow down a little bit and just keep um, be mindful of the fact that she is trying her best to, um, to provide those interpretation services. Um, and just to backtrack, because I missed a few things. So Mary Beth, you had a chance to provide some updates and. Okay, I see you nodding. All right, great. And thank you, Derek, for, for covering the Family um, Support Center and that's exciting work um, on the website. So thank you both for, for, for sharing that information. Um, is Sharon here? I'd love to hear from Sharon. Who is I our am here. There's our friend, Sharon. <laughs> so Sharon is our partner from the rec department and uh, I'd like to give her an opportunity to provide any updates before we go into our next presentation as well. So Sharon, you are Thank on. You. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, I work with the Department of Recreation, specifically therapeutic recreation, and we do both inclusive and segregated programming. So just depending on group size and what your folks needs are. Uh, we are currently registering for swim. We've had a lot of we questions about swim, swim. Um, and summer swim safety um, is a big issue. So swim lessons are now live online and there are spring one and spring two available. So that was one of the questions that um, I was asked to share that information. You can go to the website and look. They are offered at all of our indoor pools. So we have them at Alney, Germantown, White Oak and the White Flint, which is called um, Kennedy Shriver Aquatic Center. We're also very excited to um, say this summer, we're gonna be opening soft launch and then in fall, hopefully full launch a brand new pool down in the Silver Spring area. So we are looking forward to that. That is really close to the Silver Spring Metro. Um, also coming up, uh, we have a Kids Day Out program at the end of March. We're gonna try and do a spring break camp. The rec department is doing spring break camps, but therapeutic recreation is doing one. We're just trying to make sure we have enough staff secured. As was mentioned um, by Justine, um, we're constantly recruiting and, and getting staff on board, but we have to make sure we have enough staff to be able to accommodate people and we can grow accordingly. And we have those things going on. Uh, we also have summer camp registration going on right now. Uh, our camps are, the therapeutic rec camps are not full. Some of the other programs are full. So there are both inclusive as well as therapeutic rec options. And we are doing a um, another free in 23, which is a new initiative for us. So anybody can go to our community centers and get a free gym and weight room, fitness room membership. Now the fitness room, you do have to be 16 to use, but the, the open gyms are free um, based on drop-in schedule. So there are family times, there's kid times, and there are teen times. Um, the pools are not included in the free for 23. We just can't afford to operate pools with chemicals and lifeguards and everything else for free. So um, there is a fee for the anything related to the pools, but um, for any of the drop-in activities related to gyms, go get your free membership card. They have been very, very busy since January 1, but we're, we're really excited to be able to offer that to the community. Um, it, you know, Luckily today was a great day and everybody could go outside because it 
feels different. But, um, you know, as it gets cold again tomorrow and for the weekend, you know, there are other options happening. Um, we're also in April, we will start spring sports programs. We are doing some more um, new programs. We have instituted volleyball, uh, girls flag football, in addition to co-ed and, and male flag football. So we have all different versions, volleyball, basketball, sports clinics, multi-sports, in addition to all the art, music, dance, and everything else that we do have. Our partners in parks, because Montgomery County is a little different, where parks and recreation are two separate agencies, and they are also launching some things, and we are very excited to partner with them, um, and we are doing a Shine Brighter event, which I'll talk a little bit more about next month. So it's going to be, um, we're just, we just have so much stuff going on that we are very excited and very proud of. But if you have any questions, please visit our website, or you're welcome to email me. I'll drop my email um, down in the in the chat so that if you have any questions specifically I can hook you up to the right people to do that um, and then the other question that I just recently had um, an email about was how old um, do they have to be for camp and minimum age is six and for special ed students maximum age is 21 so we do have camps that do go all the way up to age 21 um, so if there's any other questions She's just not here oh, I don't know so you, you've got a couple of questions in the chat about how okay. folks can register. And so I don't know, Sharon, if you're able to put a link to the web page and your email in there, that would be awesome. I will be happy to do that. So we have dances the last Saturday of the month. Um, I will put that information in there. There are, there are special needs swim lessons. So I will put that link um, with them. Um, let me see what else is in here. People asked about swim lessons. People asked about camp, free gym, where to register. Okay, so I will put I will put the link to the county website in there, and then I will specifically put in um, my email address in case you have um, questions, and that way I can refer you. I don't do everything, but I can certainly find the people that do and refer you that way. Um, also, if you have teenagers in your world that are looking for student service learning hours, our teen team has a program called Teen Works. And we also have another program called Summer Leadership Challenge where they sometimes are matched up as buddies in our programs or with kids who are in an inclusive setting. So definitely looking for teens to be buddies. So I will put that information in the chat so that it will show up in the meeting minutes. And for folks who weren't with us, thank you so much, Sharon, and for putting oh, that course. information in the chat. For folks who weren't with us um, last month, we shared the flyer as a part of the presentation. Um, so that flyer has a lot of information and it's on our, if you go to the CCAC webpage, is a presentation from last month is there. Um, so there may be some information there. So I don't know if there's, a, they may be able to access that flyer through the webpage, Sharon. I'm not sure. They can. I will. Uh, yeah, I'll put the, I'll put multiple links in here and some will take you to aquatic opportunities. Some will take you to camps and others will take you just to the general rec page. And there's a little search bar up in the top corner and you can say, I'm looking for dance, I'm looking for sports, I'm looking for camp. And it'll take you to those pages and you can even sort what city you'd like um, to look for. Like I only want camps in Silver Spring and our website will be able to sort those for you. Thank you, Sharon. You have to work on your interpretation pace, Sharon. Oh, my, I'm sorry, I feedback. do talk fast. <laughs> that's, my, that's my feedback for you. Okay. No, you're, so, you're so wonderful to be here. Thank and you. I know that the families really appreciate um, everything that you share. It's a lot of information, but you guys can check that out on their on their webpage or, or contact um, Sharon. So thank you so much for being here. Thank um, you for having me. I'm getting I'm getting better at these transitions. Um, so I, I like now giving I like where I give these little tidbits and updates. You know, before we between our presenters, this is working out. So I want to thank. We have a great turnout tonight. So. Um, 97 folks so far. I hope we hit triple digits. We'll have to think of a prize for our 100th participant if we get there. But, you know, we're competing tonight with a Board of Education meeting. There's a lot of other things going on. There's activities um, going on around um, um, African American Black History Month. So there's a lot going on. So I want to thank everybody for, for, for coming out tonight and for being with us this evening. I want to do a shout out for a couple of our employees who are here that I don't require all of our folks to show up, um, but you know, I see Ashley Doyle here, one of our instructional specialists, Susan Russell, supervisor for deaf, hard of hearing and vision. And I also saw uh, Laura, you met Laura earlier, Laura Johnson, one of our area supervisors. Thank you, Laura, for helping out. So thank you all for being here. Great turnout. 
Um, I did take your advice last time and put out a connect dead message. Hopefully folks saw it today. I'll try to get it out a little earlier, but I think if I get it out too early, people forget, right? So the timing on the connect dead message is, I see Mary Beth shaking her head because she was a principal. She's like, yeah, the timing is important. You got to get it out at the right time. Too early is not good. And uh, I don't know, maybe I was a little late today, but we did do that. And um, we'll try to continue to do the connected message um, to remind folks without bombarding you. Um, so that said, uh, I want to turn it um, over to uh, to Jen Strobel and, uh, and her group that is going to share information about out of school times. And uh, they're going to try to get some feedback from you all. Hi, everybody. Jen Strobel here. And it is really, really good to see all of you or see your names. It's just like coming home. And um, I have missed you over the last few months. Um, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to have you be the first stakeholder group of parents that I can talk to about out of school time. So I um, Tonight, I am going to introduce you to two really amazing people that are consultants on the MCPS team uh, from a group named ILO, and you'll meet them in just a few minutes. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what this crazy work is. You may have heard Phil talk about it at a previous meeting. And then um, when we go into the breakout rooms, we're going, if you choose to go to our breakout room, we're going to ask you what you would want out of your child's out of school time. So um, I'm going to go through and define what all of these questions mean now. So if you go to the next slide, Derek. Okay. So out of school time is supervised time when your child is not in school. And usually they would be in school. So spring break, they would be in school, but it's closed. The teacher professional days, those days, the, the teachers are maybe doing report cards and you are at home with your kid. And so those are the times that we're trying to really think of ways to make sure that the students have fulfilling community-based activities that they can attend to so that they, their time is full of rich activities. The next slide. Forgot, I'm going to slow down for our um, interpreter. So um, we are making sure that the out of school time opportunities that we offer are aligned to the Board of Ed strategic plan, all of the strategic initiatives that are going on, and the anti-racist audit. And if you have read anything about the anti-racist audit, it's really about domain six, which is equity. And so I think that I hope that as you um, hear more about it, you'll be really excited about all of the things that maybe you would be interested in signing up your child for. Okay, next slide. Um, so in 2021, there was a work group and the work group pulled in a ton of stakeholders. And I'm gonna show you the list in just a minute. And they talked to everybody from parents to teachers, to people in the community about what they would want for out of school time. It was like coming out of the pandemic and it was like everybody just really needed something. And so they got a lot of information. And now I have that information from those stakeholders so I can help make sure that we're offering high quality out of school opportunities for our students. And there was a grant called the Maryland Leeds Grant, which is how I got so lucky to have the ILO group supporting me. And so that group will be funding some of these opportunities that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, then some began, but it was super small scale considering where we're going to be going. So next slide. So this is just a list of some of the people that we in, well, I wasn't in the job yet, that we that were engaged with to make sure that they had all of the information so that they could make good decisions about out of school time. Next slide. This is just more about the feedback. Um, and we're going to be actually re-engaging with a lot of our stakeholders um, today we were talking about where we would start and really making sure that we hear from people. And I asked Phil if I could engage with you all first because I know you and I feel like you would be able to kind of give me the information that I need in like a, a way that um, 
Like, I know I can talk with you all and you will be able to say to me, um, oh no, that's, that's crazy. No, you won't say that to me tonight, but you'll say, um, you'll give me your honest feedback. So, um, so thank you for this. Next slide. Okay. So we, um, you heard Sharon talk a little bit about kids day out. And so that's one of the school time, out of school time opportunities that's going on this school year. And MCPS put out a coupon code and you could go onto the website that um, I believe Sharon just put in the chat and you could sign up to do um, when your uh, teacher was at a, um, your teacher was at a report card day or, or whatever PD day, you could sign your, your child up for kids day out. And maybe some of you have, because essentially they are sold out. Um, there is one opportunity in March and May left to do, to look at Kids Day Out. Most of them are full, but I do believe that Teens Day Out at Bower Park for teens with disabilities might have a few spots. So if you email Sharon about that or email me about that, I'll get you, um, we can find that out. But that's just for teens. All of the elementary school age ones are full. So that's a huge success. We knew we needed to expand it. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. Go to the next slide, Derek. So um, I drove to a few of them on January 27th to see what they had to offer, to see if it was something we wanted to grow as we grow our out-of-school time in Montgomery County. Um, and it was really, really great to see tons and tons of kids. They were engaged when I went to some locations in either arts or sports, or there were some subcontractors in particular, there was like this guy, you can see on the sign, it says prepare with Pedro. And he actually teaches them about safety, about what they would put like in a pillowcase to make sure they had everything that they would be able to like 15 things you need in case of an emergency. And I was like, oh, I need to stay for that because it sounded so cool. And um, the best part about it is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's typically a school day, but here the kids cannot go to school because the schools are closed. And they were just having so much fun running around, playing sports. And then they had quite a chock full day, as you can see from the calendar, the schedule. So um, next slide. So um, what this is gonna look like next year is pretty different. Uh, and so it's kind of hard to maybe wrap your heads around. But the board adopted the calendar for next school year. And if you take a look at it online, you're going to see these days that are called PDI, Professional Development and Instruction. And it's actually really exciting because, you know, if you think about how your child's case manager or special educator or speech pathologist or whoever, they really need to have the professional development to do their job well. And it's a really hard, it's very hard for central office or Phil to be like, pull all the special educators out of the classrooms and give them this professional development. But they need to know how to write a high quality IEP, or they need to know how to deliver a specially designed instruction. And there's just really not a chance to pull them together. So next year, the board approved these PDI days where the teachers will all go and they will receive professional development. And this is really, really important. But during that time, your students will still have instruction. This is where the out-of-school time opportunities come in. So on November 10th, that is the day for the high schools. So on November 10th, all the high school teachers, they're all going to be at the professional development. And the students are going to have out-of-school time opportunities. The theme for the high school is um, college and career readiness. So there's going to be a ton of college and career readiness activities for students to do virtually at the school and off campus on field trips. It's very exciting. On Thursday, Feb February 15th, the middle schoolers will have that same opportunity. They will have an out of school time opportunity while their teachers are at PD. And then on Wednesday, May 15th, the elementary students, including the pre-K students, are going to have an opportunity to take advantage of an out-of-school time opportunity. So, um, you know, it takes a minute to wrap your head around, like, offering something for all the students, but, um, but it's fine because we're going to hear from you today on what you would want us to offer. So you can see why I need your feedback. Um, okay, next slide. So you might be thinking, 
well, that's just one day. I mean, that's really not that impressive. Um, but there are other days when the teachers are not with the students, um, but they don't count as instruction days. So I will be trying to offer a lot of activities on those days, but they'll be targeted. So certain groups of students could have additional days where they receive out of school time opportunities. But the, the, um, it, it, it won't be as huge. Just let you know that. Okay, next slide. Um, so we're engaging with all of the stakeholders. ILO is going to talk a little bit about the needs assessment that they're going to be implementing. Um, we're going to be expanding the structure of what we currently have. Um, as far as partnerships grow, some of you already know, I've been meeting with you. Connie helped me get in touch with the ARC and um, any partners that you have that you throw in the chat, I'll reach out to them. Sharon's been on the phone with me with I've talked to every single one of her rec friends. So, um, you know, most importantly, I just want you to know that sometimes when people think of a school-wide or a district-wide program, um, I can assure you that special ed students will not be missed. They will not miss out on this amazing opportunity to have a special day of out-of-school time. Next slide. So um, I'll take this, this um, to introduce you to um, Sabrina and Awilda, and I'm gonna let them um, introduce themselves and talk a little bit about um, their background and what we're gonna be doing next. Hey, thank you so much, Jen. Um, everyone, it is such a pleasure to join this group today. Thank you for making space for us and for welcoming us. Jen has had nothing but amazing things to share about this community. And so my colleague and I have been very excited to jump in and hear what your feedback is. Um, so my name is Sabrina Solaris Hand. I am located in not so sunny Rhode Island because it is February and the weather is temperamental in New England. Um, and my colleague that's also joining me is Awilda Reynoso Lopez, and she is also in Rhode Island. Um, we have both have experience working with networks of schools, as well as in various forms of leadership and engaging communities through processes. And so our interest in this particular circumstance, to Jen's earlier point, is to really understand your perspective so that decisions and developments around programs are grounded in your feedback and what you believe is the best fit for your community. Um, and also just to give some high level context, I know that some of you may be wondering who we are, what is this organization uh, that has showed up here. Um, we are part of an organization called ILO Group. That stands for In the Life Up. Uh, we are a team of education strategy consultants that come from various walks of leadership. Uh, and the idea being that we bring that experience to the table to help districts with their high level priorities. And so considering the anti-racist audits and the MD Leads grants and the large investment that the state of Maryland has made to further a lot of these district level goals, um, we have been allowed with the opportunity to come and support your community with this. Um, what you have in front of you, I'll acknowledge, these are the large buckets and part of the process for our needs assessment. Um, these are our major goals to analyze the current state, understand your preferences, identify barriers so that we can help support Jen and her bid to deploy on those really fantastic goals for the next school year, and then mapping out what the resources and opportunities are so that we can make the most of those opportunities and best service of the district's children. If that works for you, Jen, I think we can move to the next slide. Thank you. And so here's just a little more information about ILO. Um, and, and of course, our headshots, if you remember what we look like. <laughs> uh, next slide's fine. Thank you. Um, so this is just a little bit more on the background and the purpose that Jen had shared earlier. The, the main thing I want to highlight here are those uh, three main goals at the bottom in that gray box. Um, our major focus areas are to learn what you believe makes out of school learning time beneficial for your child. And we really want to hear about your unique perspective um, so that we can understand the nuances of um, what, what and why. Um, how to increase the quality of OST programming overall. Um, we know that quality may mean different things to different people. And so we make no assumptions about what that could be. 
and then what your ideas are for how we can best serve your child's interests and needs. Next slide, please. All right, and so from here, I am going to hand it to my colleague, Awilda, who's gonna bring you through a little bit of an initial framing activity. Um, and then following this, as Jen mentioned, we'll be available in a breakout room uh, to continue the conversation. Yeah, thank you so much, Sabrina, with the introduction. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be here today as I am a fierce advocate um, for student learning experiences and particularly focusing, for, focusing on those who are often left out out of the room. And so I'm super excited to be doing this framing activity, I like to call it. Um, and we really wanna start off um, learning more about your child, right? And the hopes for your child in terms of the out of school learning programming that you think would be beneficial. Um, next slide. Awesome. Um, so these are the four questions that um, I really want you guys all to really think about, um, starting with what are the underlying core values of Montgomery community you believe should shape the out of school programming? And the reasoning behind that question is, um, you know, as an educational policy advocate, I always think about what are the core values that brings community together and what are the different programmings that could tie to those values? And so I wanted to give everyone a few minutes to gather their thoughts and think about what are those non-negotiable core values that you believe should be embedded within the programming? And um, I'll give people a few minutes and then I would love to ask for three brave volunteers right after. You can unmute yourself or you can raise your hand and then um, we'll call you out based on that. Also honoring various levels of braveness. If you would rather put your opinion in the chat, please feel free to do that as well. If you would rather not um, speak vocally. All right. Um, so I would love for someone to volunteer to shout out an answer. Um, at this time, you can feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand and I'll call you out. I will. Oh. Thank you, Amy. I see to get the ball rolling, how about inclusivity? Thank you so okay. much for that, Amy, for that contribution. Awesome, thank you so much, Amy. Um, inclusivity, that's definitely important. And, you know, thinking about the out of school programming, um, we oftentimes forget to think about all needs and being able to incorporate that on a day-to-day -day basis. Anybody else wanna share another one? All right, well, I would encourage you guys to um, put your answers on the chat throughout the time, even if we you know, moved on to the next question or feel free to email Jen um, with uh, your responses to that question. Um, moving on, what kind of adults do you want your child to become? And the reasoning behind this question is that oftentimes when we think about out of school um, learning experiences, it's just not academic, right? Um, the social and emotional um, activities also just as matter, right? When you think about the well-round experiences that you would want your child to have, 
that they would take with them and cherish with them even as an adult. I know that I remember the first after school out of learning school time programming that I signed up over the summer. And till this day, I'm still really good friends with the folks that I met, right? Um, and so thinking about what are the kind of adults you want your child to become um, could also help shape, right? If you would want your child to be someone who's confident, maybe a public Can speaking class. Oh, sorry. All right, um, and so uh, I would love for someone to volunteer and, and answer that question, if you feel comfortable, of course. Sharing something from the chat, Connie offered her thoughts on the second question, respectful and caring. Okay. And then I see um, Connie for number four, um, the skills, that's your answer for number four, correct? Yes, yes. And I agree with you, um, making memorable memories. <laughs> it's so important. I love what, how you share your connection of like when you were younger. I think that is so, that is so important too. Yeah, definitely, right? Um, it's one of the things that I often tell students is that participating in out of school learning experiences is something that you look back to and you think about, wow, I had teachers or volunteers or you know facilitators who really planted seeds in my mind that I didn't think that I would use today. Um, and so one of them too was through mindfulness, right? I've been meditating for the past 15 years and I learned about mindfulness through a teacher, through an after school activity, right? At the time I was not interested in it, right? Cause I was just this, you know, teenager not interested in that but now I'm like wait wow that's such a useful skill set to have that actually impacts my life um, in a profound way um, and so that's the reason why I asked that question um, behind that um, I'm gonna look at the chat before we ask somebody else to share I see that one, one moment Awilda we did have a parent unmute themselves or participant unmute themselves I wanted to provide a moment I think I saw a hand go up for a moment <laughs> Um, yes, that's me. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I mean, what kind of adult do you want your children to be? Personally, for me as a parent, my son is nonverbal. So ideally, I, I when, as an adult, I just want him to be able to express himself in a way where he can tell everybody how he's feeling, what he wants, what he needs, and tr what makes him happy. Um, and I just want him to be able to do that where other people can really understand him and he can understand um, others and other people can, you know, um, you know, and he's able to, you know, I mean, I, I saw that in the chat, but really I want him to gain that independence by being able to express himself. Yeah, that is such an important um, aspect to mention. And thank you so much for sharing. Is your name pronounced Benish? Um, it's Binish. Binish, Binish, apologies, Binish. No problem. Um, Yes, definitely. The expressing himself and making sure that can, he can see himself, right, and, and be able to be happy and participate in these programming is definitely an important um, aspect to incorporate. Anyone else want to share what kind of adults do they want their children to become? There is some amazing stuff in the chat, Awilda, so I will just name that I am recording all of those things down as well. Perfect. Um, all right. Awesome. So I'll just mention them so people see. Um, Narita said seeking out challenges. That's great. Um, right. And making it making it a fun and challenging way would be super beneficial for students. Have all the needed life skills to be able to have independence. That's a good one. Right. What are the different life skills that students need? Right. That they might not particularly be learning in the classroom. Right. And taking advantage of that. Katie um, said honest and creative. Um, Josephine said life skills and being independent. Life skills is winning. That's awesome. Um, I would like my child to be independent and contribute to society. Awesome. Contribute to society. Um, Josephine also uh, mentioned that she has a nonverbal son and who's autistic daughter, and I want them to be independent as well. And then one more person said, involving in social life like picnic time. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's so important. It's like carving time out of your schedule um, to have a moment where you can enjoy yourself in nature, right? And being outside. 
um, in those activities. I know in Rhode Island, it's super cold. So we definitely take advantage of the summer um, and students love being outside. So we try to incorporate as much as outdoor we can. Um, awesome. Thank you guys so much for um, being brave and, and um, unmuting yourselves. I know that this could be kind of scary speaking in front of 100 people. So I would like to acknowledge that. Um, I would couple up the third and fourth question together um, in the sense of how do you want them to act, right? I know one of them said a great example of they want to be able to express themselves and interact with other students, right? And maybe there's different ways through arts expressive, um, right? To be able to draw a painting or, a, you know, write a certain poetry where people can communicate. That's one of the ways that um, would show the ways that a student can particularly act. And then what are the skills that you want them to have? I know that people already started mentioning life skills, independency. Is there, are there any other skills out there that you think would be beneficial for your child? And I know people started putting on the chat. Maria mentioned social life. I think Lucia also mentioned um, independence and being loving and helpful for others. Oh, well, do we have a participant who's unmuted themselves? So I want to provide them with an opportunity to contribute Perfect. if they'd like. Go ahead. Okay, if not, that's all right. All right, um, yeah. Nice, good ones are coming through the chat. Um, being able to work as a team as well as working independently as possible and being responsible. Those are great because that's gonna be a lifelong skill that everybody has to learn. So definitely um, should be able to express emotion with words, which is key for their growth. Ooh, I think that that's a good one. That is, um, if I were to, you know, be able to translate it in one term, it would be emotional intelligence, right? Like teaching kids about emotions. Um, someone said flexibility, Amy. Um, Gig, said, Gig said creative, nice, happy, and dependent and social life. Independency and social life is winning. Um, someone said a good problem solver. That's a great one to express their feelings. Awesome. Great. We have another parent on the chat that said, I don't need my son to assimilate in society. Um, I don't want him to feel alone either. I want him to be able to make friends and be connect and be able to connect with others, even if it's a few, and to be confident and know that autism is an ability and never disability. I love that. I look at autistic people as superheroes. They, they're just super special. And I, I love the fact that you mentioned that. So it's super important to incorporate and think about providers that we could potentially partner up with who understand that and who actually have the expertise, right? To be able to embed that into programming. Social, improve social skills. And then someone else said, my daughter needs to be more flexible needs to be more flexibility and patient. She doesn't like waiting. Uh, that's a great one. I am still working with my patients, so I might sign up for a class myself. Um, as they say, patience is a virtue. Uh, someone else said, ability to self-regulate and develop off-screen hobbies. Off-screen hobbies. Um, I like that one. Does another parent feel the same, right? Um, it seems like nowadays a lot of the upcoming generation is used to being on screens. And so there's not a lot of activities um, nowadays. I don't remember my in my back days, I grew up with the internet. It wasn't as popular. So we were outside playing uh, most of the time. So that's also important. Great. Um, is there anyone else who wants to say any last minute um, Responses to the questions, please feel free to continue to put in the chat throughout the night, um, as well as emailing us after this presentation. Um, and the reason why I wanted to start off with these four questions was to really help you guys understand and gather um, what are the patterns, what are the themes, right, that you guys are mentioning, right, when it comes to 
um, out of school learning programming, right? And we have a wonderful list. Um, and so looking at that list, um, I'm just gonna say some of the words and phrases that stood out the most and that was mentioned repetitive as, as the most. And as I'm saying these phrases, I want you to think about out of all these phrases that you mentioned, do you believe that your child is experiencing this in some type of program? It might be an out of, you know, out of school program that they're already participating after school or during the summer or during the weekend. And think about if those words and themes are, you know, and core values you guys mentioned earlier are being incorporated right now, right? Are they reinforcing this in the out of school programming? Um, and for the majority of the part, a lot of you guys mentioned that you want your child to be able to have programming around life skills, right? Um, independency was mentioned a lot. Um, also, the flexibility was a good one. And um, I would love to ask somebody if um, they're willing to put it on the chat or in person when they talk about flexibility. Is that more for like your work schedule, the offerings, you know, having multiple options? Um, if you could elaborate on that, that'd be great. I'll take a one. That was mine. And I, that was um, more as far as um, I thought we were talking about skills um, for our children and also how we wanted them to act. I mean, I think that hits questions two, three, and four. It was more um, teaching our students and our children flexibility it's something that I think many families suffer from you know from all over the um, variety of um, of differences in learning that our children have um, I think flexibility and resilience comes up a lot so I think that that's sort of where I was coming from with that of course flexibility from an adult standpoint as far as you know, scheduling and that sort of thing is always good. But yeah, I think I meant it more as um, those core skills that we want our children to have. Yeah, no, and thank you so much for elaborating on that, Amy. Um, that is definitely also important from a physical aspect, right? And and so having the flexibility teaches you other lessons internally as well. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I just got someone on the chat from a parent who speaks Spanish, but I would love to translate what she said. Um, and so she said, um, children who can socialize and be accepted by others who do not exclude them from the activities in question, right? And that's why we're here today, right? We really want to understand what is your perspective from a parent, right, who has a special need child to be able to select providers who have the areas and these expertise of creating these kind of programming, right? So you have the option of, of opting in. Awesome. Um, another big theme that I noticed that was mentioned a lot, um, was the social aspect, the social and emotional learning seems to be a very big popular and it's the talk of education right now, right? It's about teaching kids social, uh, social, emotional intelligence and what are the different kind of activities that that could look like. Um, later on in, the, in a little bit, we're going to be doing breakout rooms where we'll dive deeper in the kind of programmings, right, that you could mention that would fall in certain categories that you would love to see in the catalog um, once it comes to selecting the kind of activities you want your child to participate in. Oh, well, no, one thing I just kind of wanted to add with what you were saying is that I feel that there are a lot of activities for uh, typical students. So, for example, soccer, they'll have, you know, chess club, art club, this club, that club, and they'll have so many, but for special needs kids, it always has to be something completely separate. There is never an inclusive, um, you know, class where there's arts and, you know, the, for example, an art class where you have typical students, but you also have, you know, neurotypical students uh, or, you know, kids with autism, and they can kind of collaboratively work together. So autistic kids, uh, and that's something I feel very strongly about as a mother, are always taught how to behave towards kids that are typical. So, you know, walk in a straight line, be nice to them, do this, but never the other way around. And I think it's very, very important in our after school programs and every program that we do, that we create opportunities for our children to be able to see, you know, typical students and for them to, you know, integrate and for them to see that the difference, the, the, the different, these differences are actually the things that unite us. There's so much that we can learn from each, from each other. 
Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I wholeheartedly definitely want to echo that for everybody else in the room. There was a lot of parents who agree with you, and I also agree with you, right? Inclusion is definitely, uh, Margaret said, is a win-win for all involved, right? And so this is what it's about, right? We're living in a time where there's going to be a lot of innovative programming, and Jennifer is so great. Um, you know, I work with her on a day-to-day -day now, and she's so great for advocating for children, right? And so that's why we're here today is to change that, right? We want to teach other, you know, your typical kids to also integrate with um, kids who might not look like them, you know, um, have the same abilities as them, right? And so um, I, I definitely want to commend you for that. Um, we are definitely ahead of the game, which is awesome because the other questions definitely seek about what do you, you know, as a family member and as a parent, what do you wish providers who are creating these programs wish to know when they're designing this kind of stuff, right? And that's definitely an important aspect to include. So thank you for that feedback. Um, someone said, uh, yeah, uh, exactly the schools and teachers and principals uh, could seek to understand and adjust themselves instead of the burden always being on the kid. Um, another question, um, we can definitely table this, uh, Jen, if we want to get back. Um, it says, will nurses be on site? How will things like assisting with eating, changing posture? positioning, et cetera, will work. These are all important um, aspects that we have to think about when it comes to the programming. Um, and then, yes, everyone is agreeing. Uh, and uh, thank you guys so much for, for, sharing, um, for sharing that. Um, awesome. So based on those themes and um, phrases that you guys were all mentioning, right? Um, and I love it because it's not just encompassing the traditional experience, right? Or the the, the traditional academic um, programming that students are used to seeing, right? But subjects like reading and writing and math, right? And fostering student development is such an important aspect, right? And so we need beyond the academics to be able to do that. And you guys were promoting a lot of the physical and the social emotional aspects as well that were mentioned earlier today that will support the whole child learning. Um, <clears throat> I want to make sure I'm not missing anything on the chat to make sure. Um, we have another parent who speaks Spanish, and I also want to share what they said. Um, they said, my daughter has autism, and at school, my daughter is always with the same group. Um, there's no group with the same needs as my daughter, and it's frustrating to her. Thank you for sharing. I didn't get the parent's name, pero muchas gracias por compartir. Eso algo que es muy importante. Um, oh, well, the, while you're reading, I just want to also do a time check on uh, for Jen and uh, your colleagues about um, we could go on forever, honestly, and having this conversation. I just want to be mindful of when we need to switch um, to the next phase. Yeah, um, well, since we're going to go into breakout rooms and the conversation is going so well in the chat, we could continue it in the chat and then just move on. And then hopefully some people will want to join us. I think if that's our last slide, Phil will explain the process for the breakout rooms. Great. Thanks, Jen. And thank you all. I, I you know, I will just say a few comments before we transition. Um, first of all, I, I think it's so awesome that this is your first group that you're you're using as your stakeholder group. Oftentimes, you know, this is um this is not the first group. And 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 oftentimes, um, you know, as I think I heard from some parents say, unfortunately, um, you know, uh, you know, working with and programming for the um, students with disabilities, you know, tends to be something that that we use as an afterthought. I hate to use that term. And and then it, we're left trying to, you know, retrofit something um to to meet students' needs. Um, so it's great that you're you're talking to this group of parents on the front end. It's also awesome for us in MCPS that we have Jen um, as our uh, you know as our lead uh, because she comes from 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 our world. So um, so that's 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 great. And we all know that in order for all of these things to to happen that you're describing, it it it, it does take um, a lot of uh, planning, thinking in advance. Um, programming for how we're going to support students, um, you know, whether it be um, with their physical needs or whether it be with whatever types of supports that they they need in order to be uh, participating in, um, in an inclusive setting. Um, and so it's 
I just want to say thank you to um, to you all for for coming to this group and for uh, for Jen for um, advocating for um, for this population of students um, in these um, activities. So that's that, I think that's awesome. So I think what we'll do um, is uh, we'll dedicate um, twenty five minutes to the um, to the breakout session. Um, I'm going to make, if you don't mind, because I'm afraid I'm going to lose um, the, some some folks who, who may not be able to stay on too late because I know people do have obligations. I just want to make a couple of announcements um, and then we'll do, um, we'll, we'll go until um, uh, 8.45. Uh, is that 25 minutes? That's 15 minutes. Let's see. We'll we'll go to eight forty five. So let's just say eight forty five. We can come back at eight forty five, and then we'll um, I'll make any closing remarks, and then we will um, close out from there. Okay. So Derek has just put up the um, breakout rooms. Um, so there are uh, three rooms. One is for the presenters, um, and one is for uh, if you would like to speak with me. Uh, separately, I would say privately, but th there may be more than one person in there, so you're welcome to come talk to me. Um, and then one is for the um, for the uh, C CCAC co-chairs. Uh, so you're you can choose between uh, one of those rooms, and um, and so folks can make that choice now. Derek, do you need to give any instructions? So just at the bottom of your menu, you should see um, the breakout rooms uh, listed there. And if you don't, then click on the three dots that say more on your menu below, and then you'll see breakout rooms, just select breakout rooms, and then you have three options to choose. If you have any difficulty in entering any of the breakout rooms, please list that in the chat and then we'll assist you in entering those rooms. And if you also want to get out of room and enter another room, you can do that as well. Thank you. But I did want to thank everybody for being here. Um, it still looks like we have a good group on. Um, if we uh, go to the last slide, Derek, you can see this the the dates for the um, for the next meetings. Um, we uh, typically uh, end our sessions in in May because June um, we don't have a fourth a third by the fourth Thursday. We all should be um, somewhere nice and sunny or um, enjoying our summer. Um, so those are our three remaining meetings for the year. Uh, I will say that I've been working with our co-chairs. Uh, this is an important announcement that I'll, I will talk a little bit more about too in March um, to revise our bylaws, our CCAC bylaws. And uh, I, I feel like we're close to a version of the bylaws that we're comfortable with as an executive committee. I also know that we have some folks who are interested or express an interest in becoming a member of the one of the, the of the executive committee, which is really made up of staff from MCPS, myself, Ms. Crop. Um, when I have a coordinator in place, that person will be um, will be on board as well, um, like Ms. Strobel was. And then we have our parent uh, co-chairs, and so um, so I will be sharing uh, the updated bylaws with you when those are ready. And in those bylaws, it also describes uh, an updated um, process for how uh, we would go about adding co-chairs um, to, to the executive committee. It also will talk about what the expectations are in terms of uh, the term, you know, minimum expectations in terms of the number of years that we're asking folks to commit to. Um, obviously, you know, we don't have any way of, uh, it's not binding, but we ask folks when they come on board to be thinking about a minimum number of years so that we don't have um, continual turnover. And then also a maximum number of years and the process for how we would go about adding folks. So I want to say that now because I know that some there has been some interest expressed, and uh, we will we will um, engage in that process before the close of the year so that we can um, hopefully open it up to folks and and make sure everybody has a clear understanding of what that looks like. So again, thank you all for for being here. Um, I'm going to uh, spend one moment. Um, looking at the chat so I can make sure I get an email address that I was halfway through writing. And um, Jen, if you want to say any final words from, from the group in terms of, um, you know, the, the breakout and, and on behalf of our 
um, consultants and partners in this uh, out of school time work, that would be great. Yeah, thank you all so much for allowing us to come today and get your information. I got so many great ideas from you, and I look forward to sharing with you the registration process and a little bit more details once they're all ironed out later on. Have a good night. Thank you. So, Lynn, can you direct message me again? I lost when we went to the breakouts. Um, your your email address, if you could send me sure. that again, that sure. would be cool. We'll yep. And thank you all again for for being here. Um, Derek, don't close out the meeting on me while I try to get this email address. But but I'm I'm going to give folks a permission to to uh, head out. And it's been a wonderful evening. You guys are great participants. Um, I always have, we always have to mention Mr. Mazur. He's our, you know, our, our, our longest standing participant. And um, Mr. Mazur, I didn't see you earlier and I thought I was going to have to call 911 and check in on you, but you look like you're doing great. So thank you for, for, for being here. Um, and uh, it's always great to see you. It's great to see everybody. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to hang out for one minute, uh, but I'm going to turn off my screen and say goodnight to everybody. Take care.